Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of CA Overwatch, CA Esports. I'm one of your hosts, Spencer. With me today is actually Chris. He did not join me in the previous video that you guys would have seen today or tomorrow or yesterday, I guess, depending on what the whole time situation is. Um, but yeah. thankfully, he's able to make it. He is in currently in Montreal, hence why you see him with a different setup uh, than what he normally yeah. is. Uh, so I said it's a lot more chalked right now, but I, I got a beautiful view. I was going to say, I do apologize for the audio quality, but at the same time, um, so much has been happening today in Toronto world from the Toronto Defiant perspective. So we're going to quickly kind of give our, our thoughts on that. I know I made a video earlier, um, but I'm going to kind of reconfirm something since there's been more updates that we are now uh, that we've now been able to see on Twitter. And we can also quickly give our thoughts from the two games that we saw previously and then obviously some rough predictions from our hopes tomorrow. So with that out of the way, let's just jump into things, Chris. I'm going to kind of take things up. And obviously, I know you've been kind of following some stuff, but you obviously were traveling, so you maybe weren't as up to date as some of the other folks in the Discord. I know Discord was popping off yeah. earlier, so it got a little bit Popping. hectic. Essentially, what happened is, um, obviously, this all started with last weekend when Aldo kind of came in there and subbed in for finale out of nowhere. A lot of people were sort of a bit confused, um, you know, as far as most people were concerned. Aldo was still in Korea, so there was the ping issue. Uh, Toronto was obviously on the up and up, and then all of a sudden, this sort of changed some things. There was also a significant increase in Hoppa's playtime, and Muse was seemingly MIA. And then this was, again, sort of hit its boiling point, apparently, when Halo uh, made a comment or a, re or a post or a, a leak, if you will, that both... Muse and Finale had requested a trade from the Toronto Defiant. So I was privy to some information. I came on here to confirm a couple different things. First and foremost was that, again, uh, you know, some people are thinking that Finale was sick and that was why Aldo came in. Some people thought he was on ping. Uh, no, Aldo was, again, he was flown to Texas. It was the coach's decision that they wanted to bring Aldo in. The goal to be, again, to assess him as a talent and see what the team was like uh, with him in the lineup and he would be continuing his stay in Dallas until the uh, the end of the kickoff classic. So that was, again, confirmed, not sick, 100%. I, I feel confident in that information. And then we got to the Muse stuff where I had started to hear rumblings over the last few days about some internal strife with Toronto. Um, you obviously saw a few different people like Harsha, et cetera, tweet out in the industry um, how frustrated certain players and players as a whole are becoming. I think even Web tweeted today about the fact that they can only practice the game during scrim blocks. So if you're somebody like Welb, for instance, and you're you're coming in the season late, or maybe like Toronto starts to struggle and you want to improve on your own time, uh, they don't have any way to practice. So that's been causing, I think, additional frustration. And again, I, I started hearing rumbling. Specifically, Toronto was was a little bit on the edge, and, and most specifically Muse. And so while I could not confirm at the time whether or not a trade took or trade request took place, I can confirm and still confirm that they definitely went through some stuff. And even though, you know, the tweets that have came out since are are leaning on the more positive note, I have seen some fans, I think, drag Halo's name through the mud a little bit prematurely. And I've also seen some fans kind of, you know, be like, oh, thank God it's all, everything's fine. And I'm like, okay, guys, let's, let's chill for a second here. Uh, you know, Muse might not be getting traded tonight, but at the same time, I don't think that this fix is as easy as boom, uh, we're good to go. Now, that also doesn't mean that it can't be remedied, and that also doesn't mean that I don't think that Toronto's going to do everything in their power to ensure that Muse remains with the organization and to kind of fix the situation. I just want to make it clear that, like, you know, stuff clearly went down, right? There's too much smoke for there not to be fire, right? He legitimately only played, what, one map last week? So, like, clearly something, yeah. was, something was going on. Um, but it is nice to see that, you know, Adam uh, made a tweet. Actually, I have his up. He's one of the uh, owners of the Overactive Media. He says, you know, again, confirms there has been internal issues, but I haven't received trade requests. In any case, that's not how we operate. Just came back from a trip. Need to dig deeper based on what I do know. This seems like an unfortunate situation and the bears further investigation. Again, you you know, regardless of how PR that sounds, I believe you go to his Twitter. He was in, you can see pictures in Spain with the mad lion. So he's not lying. He was traveling. Um, <laughs> then I believe Stella, who's a team manager, she came out, said no trade requests were made. We have a very professional group of coaches and talented players who are eager to win as one team. It is true that the team had struggles, but no pain, no gain. This is a growing pain for everyone uh, to improve. And the one I don't have loaded up here was was Muse's response. But I believe he basically said something very similar where he makes a tweet yeah. that says, did not submit a trade request, very passionate with sometimes, which sometimes comes in t heated emotions. Thank you to my coaches and teammates of the Toronto Defiant for their understanding. We are a winning team. This is where I want to be, and I'm sorry for worrying my fans. So, very, very quickly, um, I just want to provide the full amount of context. 
does that statement you know provide me with some confidence and some hope moving forward yes was that statement very mm-hmm. clearly written by <laughs> a certain pr team also yes right like let's as great as it does sound well, it's interesting that you say it's written by a pr team because at the same time they're like also flaming that there's been internal strife well yeah well i mean i think <laughs> you can see at, in the order of which it came out right adams was first <laughs> Then a few hours go by, and then it's Stella's, and then it's Muse's, right? I think they had some time to have some meetings, talk. I'm sure they had a time to actually meet with Muse, and I'm sure, you know, put a, a more accurate statement. Um, but again, if, if you're a fan of just sports in general, I know both of us, you know, come from, you know, hockey and, and, and basketball and stuff, stuff like that, right? The way these things usually go is, you know, it's it's leaked from an agent that the player requests a trade in hockey or whatever, right? Ben Simmons, right? Pierre-Luc Dubois, it comes out, the player gets on the mic, they say, I never did such a thing, I, I, I love it here. And then a few months go by and then the player is traded, right? So, like, let's not <laughs> act like this isn't the first time a trade request has been leaked and the players came out and said no such thing. Um, I also think if you were a GM of an organization and let's say you are trying to make a trade for, you know, Muse for Meg or Muse for Yaki or whomever, it puts yourself in a better negotiating position to have as much leverage on, on your side as possible and having Muse come out and saying something like this having the team manager say something like this once again shows that like if you were a Houston or a Washington and maybe you're sitting there going why would I give up an asset for Muse when I can just wait for Toronto to to buy him out and drop him and pick him up for significantly cheaper well you're now kind of under the gun that hey wait a minute they are clearly trying to salvage this relationship so if you do want to go out there and make a play for somebody like Muse, you might actually have to give up an asset, whether it be Meg or Yaki or Pelican or whomever, right? So I just want to put that context. I saw some people maybe getting out the the, the champagne a little bit too early that the situation's behind us. Yeah. Now, with that again being said, I, 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 I mentioned it before um, when this team was put together. I truly believe that they thought Muse is going to be a core piece moving forward. I still believe that, and I still thought priority number one was mitigating the relationship mitigating i think i'm using the wrong word but fixing the relationship with muse and ensuring that he stays with the organization and trying to you know work together and move past this so i expect them to do that that is what i hope happens and that is what i expect to happen i'm just i'm still not fully i don't think we're fully out of the woods just yet is what is what i'm putting here yeah i think uh um, what you're putting down is what i think everybody else is is picking up now (laughs) can you recap in 10 words what you confirmed on the other on the other like the reason why there was internal strife no i don't want to go too much into specific internal strife right you know halo mentioned it was a disagreement between kdg and muse um when it came to the muse stuff it was more rumors and not like a this is confirmed and and i feel okay sharing this information but obviously the amount of stuff that i'd heard in conjunction with uh muse not playing this week and then followed up by somebody like halo who clearly is you know, in tune in, in, in the esports situation, making that report, I was like, okay, I can kind of yeah. talk about it a little bit more. All I can I say was, is that there was strife, right? It's very clear. I was, um, I was thinking I was saying this to you earlier. It's interesting uh, looking at the, um, I guess, how often head coaches and players would, you know, let's say have disagreements in esports versus other traditional sports, because you can imagine the, difference in authority between esports and other sports is so different because yeah, your coaches are you know maybe a couple of years older than you they play in roughly the same amount of time whereas going to hockey I'm, I'm looking at some of the big names in coaching at hockey they've they've been coaching for 20 years let alone exactly. playing for another 30 years before they're and, coaching these 18 year olds and not even only so, that it was also something i think actually adam spoke about on our show a long time ago there's also like when you're in hockey, in basketball, and you're a kid, and you're brought up through that system, you become much more conditioned to authority, right? Like you, you yeah. know that like you listen to your coach, and this is what happens. In esports, we have not fully gotten there. These kids kind of come in no. there, you know, and they're feeling good with themselves. Make the Overwatch Hot League, shit. they get some, they get some money in their bank account, and now they got to be told what to do, and and, and things kind of change. And there's not that like pathway for them. And the pathway is great, you know, from the a competitive perspective and a lot of different things. But in sports, it also does teach you one how to work together as a team, but also to how to like, you know, maintain that coach player relationship and how to listen to kind of and respect authority. Um, it's also important to note that these, you know, Muse, for instance, he's young. Muse is like 19 years old. I think Fanatic yeah. is like 19 years old. It's very possible that again, uh, you know, Halo says it was a trade request. Maybe it was an argument between Muse and KDG and Muse yelled out, you know what, I'm not playing for you. I'm done with this. Trade me. 
Uh, that is not the same as a player and an agent sitting down with the organization saying, I will no longer play for this team. You know, here's an official trade request. Those are two very different things. So I'm not sure if Halo got it wrong. I don't know the full steps about like, you know, what was requested versus not, what was said versus official, Halo. et cetera. I just know that, again, I know that there was definitely internal strife and specifically Muse himself wasn't happening. And I don't think it's a coincidence that all this stuff is coming out shortly after he wasn't playing this week. Um, and unlike all the finale, I had, you know, confirmation as to why that was. And logically, that made sense to me. The Muse stuff a little bit less so. So I think we spent a pretty much a, a pretty long time on that. Like I said, I, I have I have faith and optimism that the organization is going to be able to figure this out. Um, I think this statement did a lot for two things. Again, one, repair the relationship. But two, also maybe ensure that if they do have to move on from Muse, they might be able to receive something in return. But I, I, I still believe that they're going to try to fix this. And I, I hope that we see Muse... Um, in tomorrow's game, or not tomorrow, next week's game, and uh, a part of this organization for uh, some some time to come here. Yeah, I agree with that. With that, let's um, have a quick little chat about last week's games. You know what? Overall, from my opinion, looks like there's some stuff to work on, but there are some positive signs. I mean, apart from the fact that Muse and Aldo are just kind of Muse out, Aldo is just randomly in. The finale, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I watched, like, Plat Chat. I thought, you know, uh, Avaz went pretty hard in Toronto. I, you know, he was yelling that, you know, they, they looked terrible. It was an absolute disaster, this and that. And I was like, you know, I don't think it was as poor as, as he himself made it out to be. I think that, you know, the one time you actually saw the quote-unquote core five together was that first map versus Dallas when Muse and Aldo were in. And although, you know, they ended up losing pretty convincingly, Unlike when they first played versus Washington, and I, I felt like, you know, Finale just kind of fed his brains out. Like, it was very clear. Like, you were just watching Toronto make, like, massive blunder after massive blunder. You would just see somebody be out in no man's land and die first. And I was like, what is the plan here? I actually didn't think that was the case, that first map. Um, again, everyone kind of played their life pretty well. I think it was one of those situations where they just seemingly couldn't kill anybody. It just felt like every time they got somebody low... They couldn't finish the kill, and I attribute that to, to two things. Firstly, I think it was, like you mentioned, a lack of communication with Aldo and Muse and Chirung for the dive. That's what happens when you fly somebody into Dallas and throw them in on, you know, after only scrimming with the team for a couple days. Um, and I also think it was uh, it was Dallas Field just playing that comp to perfection, right? Like the way they were able yeah. to manage their cooldowns and the bubbles to to bait out certain cooldowns from the Tracer and, and Muse and, and, and Kite and then re-engage was brilliant. So... I actually didn't come away from that Dallas game too, too disappointed. I felt like, okay, they're clearly trying to figure out something and they're trying to incorporate all though. And it's still early days. But again, when you watch finales first weekend and compare it to a second, there was a noticeable jump up. So I was hoping to see the same with all though, although obviously this news came out after the fact. So hopefully this can get resolved, but it, to me, it wasn't a talent thing. It, I didn't see other people just blatantly being out of position. I thought the two people who clearly were not communicating properly with the team, excuse me, was all though, and there's a legit excuse for that. He just started playing, probably didn't have enough practice time, and has to play two different comps on a new game, and also Hoppa. Now, Hoppa's a little bit more concerning. I think you saw his Zarya stats. His average life was like 56 seconds or something ridiculous like that. That is a larger concern because I don't think there's as much of an excuse for him not to perform. But with that being said... Um, Interesting how much more people... like. I, I know people are talking about with the lack of shields, how much yeah. more people have to use cover around them exactly. and play around that. I didn't think I'd see much of a difference at the high level because I figured they'd be doing that a shit ton in Overwatch 1. Yeah. But man, is it still so much more I see. Yeah. Like, you're seeing just like, you know, Hopto, you know, when he's playing Zarya, I jump from cover to cover and just... Going popping out and dropping a little Zarya bomb, popping back in. It is crazy, man. Yeah. And that's obviously something that, you know, maybe Toronto can improve upon the more they practice. So I yeah. know some people were really down, especially someone like, you know, Vass. And, and again, some of the logic didn't really make sense. He was like, yeah, they beat Boston, but that was before Boston was good. I was like, Boston looked good the next day. They beat, they beat Washington less than 24 hours after Toronto 3 won them. Like, everyone was super high on Boston. They're like, well, the Defiant win doesn't count because that took place. Before, I was like, yes, <laughs> you know, 18 hours before, they still had Crimson win, they still had Pumpkin. So I still give Defiant some respect in that win. Um, yeah. If they can get Muse back under wraps and more practice under their belts, I still think that this team has a, has a, has some pretty decent potential. 
I still think, again, the hop up kind of concerns me, and I still would like to see another DPS player in there, whether it yeah. be Yaki or somebody. But um, I don't think it was as bad as some people made it out to be, and I, I am very curious to see how they do versus a, a team like NYXL. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Awesome. Anything else you want to add before we kind of move on to some predictions? Like I said, I didn't want to spend too much time because I felt like, you know, you saw a player with no practice play and looked like he had no practice. So I was like, okay, it makes sense to me. Yeah, you know, I think we covered the main points. I think, yeah, all, all that's left is... Backline still looks good. <laughs> Hisu still Hisu. I was going to say, that's the one thing I was going to say. Twilight, I think he is the one shining star in the fuel, fuel game. Chirong too, man. Chirong had some really nice boops too. He did have some nice boops, but Twilight was consistently like the one game, the only pick for us in like a team fight. Yeah. No, um, our backline's great, so. I mean, glass yeah, awful, right? New York Excel straight. Excel... I'm gonna be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be completely honest here. There's a ton of new names here. I, I haven't watched enough of their VOD to yeah. really have a good opinion on it. I mean, not really. Ton of new, it's just Kellen, right? Feather played last year, and uh, obviously the backline really? played last year. Yeah, he was on New York. The problem More was we, did, we didn't watch a lot of APAC last year. That's yeah, the issue, yeah, right? So much. New York was oh, APAC true. last year, exactly. So um, no, I know Mumbong Jamin did. Yeah, he's, and the academic but it's Flora. Flora's new. Falcons. So I say feather. I, I keep saying feather. Flora. Flora's who I'm talking about. So no, Kuki's a coach. But anyways, um, oh, Kellen's the the tank. What I'm trying to say is, like, listen, this team is, is stacked on paper, right? Those all those players have extremely high. Again, I never watched too much Flora or feather or Flora. Yeah. Um, Fuck. I, I didn't watch too much APAC last year, but I heard great things about him. I do know Ganem Jin's ceiling is incredibly high. I know Myungbung has a pretty high ceiling as well. Maybe not as high, but still good. I know Yaki can pound. And Kellen was a really good main tank coming into the year. So I think there's weaknesses, right? They only have one tank. It's clearly something's going on behind the scenes because they have been super disappointing. Nobody had them yeah. as low as they are to begin the year. So that's why when I kind of talked about my fun little trade theories, I thought maybe you can acquire somebody like Yaki because they are in the dumps right now. This should be, I mean, on paper, it should be a tough match. From what we've seen over the past three weeks, it should be an easy Defiant win. And then now from what we've been hearing about some internal stuff with Defiant, I wonder if this match is going to be closer. I still expect Defiant to pull it out. I think that the, the more flexible team, the better backline. And if it does kind of start to become a Zarya meta, I actually don't think that favors New York even more, right? Because they're, Kellen is, is mostly a main tank, so I think that's actually a situation where maybe Hoppa comes in there and looks even better. So hopefully they can get this internal stuff figured out, and I expect uh, – I would have predicted 3-0, but I'm going to say 3-1 just because I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, you know what? I think it's going to be uh, an easy 3-2. Easy 3-2. And <laughs> by easy, I mean I predicted it easily. <laughs> you see, you think it's gonna be a close game then, eh? New York haven't won a game yet, but yeah, actually, they won a game. That's yeah, not true, but yeah, yeah honestly, yeah. we can see. I think it's gonna be closer. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, thanks for listening, guys. I know yeah. it's been our first one that's been back in a while. Yeah, but we are gonna be making this a little more consistent because we have rejuvenated love in Overwatch too. We'll see how long that lasts, though, as long as the uh, <laughs> is and collapse, and, you know, we'll see. No, Overwatch was fun. So, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter. Like I said, I'm, I'm more active on Twitter. DMs, uh, hit me up on Discord. Where's where it's at? Twitter is definitely where it's at. So, thanks so much for watching, guys, and, and as always, enjoy.